Yo, guys, how's it going? Welcome into Rover Sports, and I am here tonight, and we're going to go over Sam Darnold and web tape, uh, kind of the first part of our uh, little mini series here on Rover um, for this week. I'm also going to go over Giants, I'm going to go over Buffalo Bills. Uh, Kyler Murray, you know, what Kyler Murray said is that, you know, he doesn't even take preseason really that seriously. Um, I could do a deep dive a little bit on Josh Rosen tonight. Uh, Dwayne Haskins had some moments. So I might actually get to Haskins and Rosen later in the week. I'm going to do Daniel Jones, going to do the Giants. And we're going to start off, though, with um, Webb. And we're going to start off with Sam Darnold. We're going to start off with these two guys. Um, kind of guys that have been linked together for a while. Sam um, is a first rounder. Davis is a third rounder. Webb has kind of bounced around the league um, or bounced around the Giants, I should say, um, to the Jets. And um, so overall, we're going to look at Sam. And once again, Sam was remarkably good for the first drive of the game. And uh, really, Sam Sam was awesome pretty much the whole night. So one of his first throws of the game here, the remarkable thing about Darnold and the thing that's impressing me about him this year is that I didn't think that he had the arm strength to make this throw, and he's proving that he is making the throws. And I'm going to call it how it is, but also it is how it is. I mean, look at Darnold here. I'm going to show you the most ridiculous thing about this play. Um, Darnold, um, we actually have to go back a, a tiny smidge here, um, to see the most ridiculous part of the play. So it's a play action. He has a, he has a crosser over here. I guess it's a none one number 81. So we're in slow. Darnold's looking and Darnold, I figured out what I was so impressed by with Darnold is that to play the quarterback position, your instincts just have to be just incredible. And, and that's what Sam, Sam is. I mean, he's not the most gifted thrower in the world, um, but Sam Darnold is pretty darn gifted. Um, uh, he's a pretty gifted thrower, and um, he's doing an unbelievable job. And, and will it be his offensive line? Will Adam Gase continue to help him? So the thing I'm going to get to is that if you watch Darnold here, let's look at his eyes. Right here, Darnold, his eyes are pointed towards the Falcon sideline. He could be staring Dan Quinn in the face. His foot is right here. He's in no way re ready to throw. He's tap dancing. In, you know, he's tap dancing. And now Darnold. Look at how Darnold right here is perpendicular to the pocket. Or look at how Darnold looks like he's playing defense in basketball. And then immediately he can go from that position to this position. So he's such a quick triggered athlete with his feet. And Darnold was just looking at the Falcons bench. And then he turns to the second receiver. And immediately he is able to put this ball on the guy. And he's immediately able, and he and he's not even throwing with a lot of forward momentum. He's still fading back into this throw, but he still has enough torque. He still can can move his body. And this throw, I mean, this is I think double coverage, maybe twenty yards down the field, may, maybe twenty five yards. And there's two defenders right here, and this ball is thrown right over this guy's head right before, I believe it might be true font, and I think Anunwa, or the, maybe it's Hermden, just does an unbelievable job just boxing out. Keanu Neal's there, and I think it is like a Hermden or something. Um, 81, no, it's Quincy Anunwa, and he's able to just box out and make an incredible play on the ball. So, that, that was one of Sam's throws that just show his instincts, and that's the, the rarest thing about Sam, is that um, his instincts, the way he's able to move from, from one read to the other, the way he's able to contort his body, that was just a really impressive, impressive athletic motion by Sam Darnold. And uh, 
again, I, I, I still don't – you know, the arm talent is still something that I, I think Josh Allen's still a more talented thrower of the ball. I think Baker Mayfield and the leadership qualities of Darnold, he's just a very quiet – you know, he's a little introverted. And at times I want to see Darnold just kind of take over and be bullish here. And he's done an unbelievable job. And he's quarterbacking at this level, and I'm just here critiquing him. So – I said Darnold would not be that good in the NFL. I said that it that he, that he would not pan out that well. And if he continues to make throws like that, um, Sam Darnold's going to be pretty damn unbelievable in the NFL. And I'm going to be pretty darn stupid for not believing in him. So here you see Sam. Like, Sam just has such a natural – Sam has things you can't really teach in, in this video. That's why he was such a good quarterback at USC. That's why I think that the scouts loved him so much is because he has natural pocket movement. And here in this pocket, like Davis Webb would freak out. And we're going to go to Davis Webb in a little bit. But right here, you know, the defensive lineman's kind of coming into his face a little bit as he's ready to unload this ball. You see over here, uh, underneath the Indianapolis and the Brown sign, um, it looks like there are two guys. This is, this is what's even more amazing. You know, every time I look at this play, it just gets even more incredible. There is a guy literally right here. It looks like a big old lineman that, that is actually like trying to get off the field. And these guys are stride for stride. So I think we're still in slow-mo. Um, we are. In fact, there's two receivers here. And this ball, they're all four of them are clustered right in this region. So the hole that this ball, he's going to throw a back shoulder. And this ball's thrown from the... 47 yard line and it's going to end up at probably like the 36 yard line and he's even throwing from from the middle of the field out to the far hash and the you have to, the precision is the word I'm looking for and, and the fact that he has the balls to throw this I mean this looks like it's going to be like an interception like or this guy can turn around and pick six this ball I can't believe he even, like, can see, can be reading all of this stuff. I, I think we might have to go back and find out the reads. This ball's thrown with a ton of velocity. And, I mean, Robbie, like, the ball's literally, like, right there. Look, look, it's so fast. I can't, I can't even, you know, I can't even uh, do it. Can't even slow it down that much. So, let's see what Sam's looking at here. Looks over here first. Wow. Just to check the safeties. Then he steps up in the pocket. A little hitch. Waiting for Robbie. And that ball's thrown with Robbie Anderson. The chemistry these two guys have. I'm picking Robbie. A a eighth round fantasy. At least seventh round. Him and Jamison Crowder are going to go off. I, I was joking around with two buddies I was watching the game with. And... I was just laughing. I was like, the Jets are scoring on this freaking drive. Like, I just uh, this this dude's playing like an MVP. Even here, he almost he almost throws a, almost a touchdown. He's doing that was a Patrick Mahomes like throw. Both of those plays and um, the natural pocket movement. That's just he's just, he's just playing awesome football. You know, Tony Romo. He's, he reminds him of the Tony Romo. Tony Romo couldn't have made that back shoulder throw. Uh, ball's coming out high. He's just playing very confident football. I just really like what I see from Darnold now. Adam Gase's personality, this offensive line is a train wreck. They still have uh, – they picked a guy in the third round. The USC guy got completely um, annihilated in, on, on, in, in every particular sense. Um, USC guy, Chuma, Chuma Odoga, sounds like the Auburn basketball player. Um, but uh, – he got uh, he got destroyed in uh, in every capacity. So anyway, uh, da, 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 da. okay, we're good. It looks like the video is still ongoing, so that is good. Just wanted to check there. Uh, da, 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 da. So I wanted to, you know, I'm, I'm opening up another file where I have the Jets and. Uh, so the Falcons. I think Matt Bryant retired. An unbelievable career for a kicker. Sam Darnold just spraying the ball, man, just uh, like a flamethrower. That's what Sam Darnold. So quick. Bang. Just looking great. Robbie Anderson. 
I mean, if he had DeAndre Hopkins, that would almost be the perfect receiver because he would just throw jump balls and DeAndre make the craziest sideline catches. That's good blocking, actually, by this offensive line. And this ball's thrown confidently into a hole. It's just an unbelievable play by uh, Trufant there. Aggressive throw. I really liked it, actually, a lot. Um, but Desmond just makes an outstanding play on the football. And he's a veteran. He's been doing this a long time. So here, I just think Vic Beasley just annihilates. And, and Beasley's been a guy, I think, that's gotten double-digit sacks. Like, he's he's been good in this league. But here, he just gets Adobe. He just takes Jadobi for a ride. He just picks him up in the ice cream truck and just sends him down, um, sends him down the lane there. Um, he just picks him up and just wallops him out of the picture. 68 kind of gets beat over there. A little hold, high hold over there. This whole line collapses on Darnold, though, Vic Beasley. So point is, is that for the New York Jets, they're going to need uh, Brandon Shell. They're going to need that right tackle spot because that, that tackle there, especially against Vic Beasley, the Falcons look, uh, their defense actually looks really good. I mean, that first drive, Darnold and the Jets um, were just making incredible plays down the field. Um, but really Atlanta, like I'm going to show you a couple of plays from Atlanta and, and watching the tape. I was really impressed by what like Atlanta does, like what Atlanta was doing. So Sam, you know, no Le'Veon Bell. Or Sam does a decent job of getting out of trouble. It's probably a hold on the play. Let's see if Sam was a little unnecessary with the steps. He has a good pocket. He should go left right here, which he could do. He kind of looked down, which you kind of don't want to do as a quarterback. You know, you kind of want to continue to look up. He then tried to find his spot again. Not a terrible play. It's actually going to be a Falcon penalty. It's going to be a first down. Then the Jets actually start to, to run the ball decently. But then on third and one, this is actually a bad call, but it's preseason. Um, but this play, I think it's Tack McKinley. Um, I remember him getting drafted uh, famously. He had a picture of his grandma at the draft. And he was out of UCLA. This is so fast. This is one of the fastest closing times I've seen from a defensive lineman. That is scary right there. Uh, Tack McKinley. Amazing job. Scary fast from a defensive lineman. He just reads this play here. And Tack, I mean, he just blows it up. That was just incredible. And then Desmond Tufant, again, a Pro Bowl type guy. Atlanta, they're like Seattle um, with Dan Quinn. They just play fast. I love their defense. It's it's a fun defense to really watch because they, they, they attack the offense. You know, they don't let you just go and, and dictate. And Dan Quinn kind of had a rebuttal for the first drive of, of Darnold a little bit. So Matt Ryan, really good pressure by the Jets. Jets play great defense. I knew that when they got to Shobbs and Sims that they would run away from this game. Okay, Matt Ryan left in there a long time. Uh, that was a Simeon drive. I think Sam still had a drive. I'm still trying to come up with this damn Sam Darnold drive. But that's a Simeon drive, which we don't we don't really want that at all. Oh, my mouse is jumpy. You ever get a jumpy mouse and it's just so damn annoying. You touch it and it just and it just goes on you. I don't know if I think Sam got another series. Yeah. I think Sam got one more series in this game. Come on. I think he got three. Oh, that's a nice run. Is this Simeon, though? Yeah, it is. Damn it. It looks like he only had two series, or I can't find one. Let's go to Davis Webb, who had three series in the game. Uh, he, he accounted for a field goal, third and one, fourth and one stop. A couple of things that I realized from Webb tonight, um, I found out some more things. I, I looked at the tape, and I had like an aha moment kind of with the tape, which was uh, preferable. So Jets, you know, 
good field position. Um, and then Davis, good, good little toss play here. Gets a nice little penalty, so we're in first and 17. Jets now offensive line issues galore. Davis going to hand it off, gets nothing. Brett Toff just doing – John Toff just doing nothing. Um, it looks like we have a Morgan playing, which is Jordan Morgan. So this is the first string O-line. This isn't even second string, guys. These are guys off the scrap heap. The thing I like about this ball from Webb is this is probably one of the best throws of the day is that it was on time, but when you're playing against a cover three coverage – you know, when you have all these guys kind of fading back into cover three, take the easy completion. That's what Webb does. He he really displayed a great ability there. Uh, to He had a good base in the pocket, and it was good footwork by Webb, and the ball was thrown. Uh, I think Webb was very precise to, tonight in the game, and, and that was a very precise toss because it was thrown firmly, but you also gave the receiver an opportunity to turn up field with the football. Um, which I enjoyed. So Webb here on third and nine, the Falcons go into a look that is just, you know, what, what it, almost what Philly does. It's almost like a quarters coverage. They play a little man-to-man, -man, but then all these guys go back, so they only rush four guys. And here with Webb, like what he needs to get so much better at is is Baker Mayfield, Sam Darnold, um, even Ben Roethlisberger. So you don't have to be mobile, but this is a this is a necessity in the NFL. You need to be able, and and it's very hard to practice this because you're not you're not actually pra when Davis Webb is throwing in the off season and he's perfecting routes on air, which he's a great thrower of the ball. He's never seeing live action and live bullets, so he needs to get better. And I know he's not the biggest guy, but even Big Ben, even Tony Romo, guys late in their career, Phillip Rivers, they're able to at least be mobile enough to step outside of a moving pocket that's, that's going down. And they have the ability to extend the play with their legs, especially in a third and nine. And Webb does that well here. But I need to see Webb extend plays, and I need to see him own the pocket because he's fading back in the pocket. He's giving ground. He needs to step up. He's very hesitant, and he's playing scared football in the pocket, okay? So Webb here does a great job. This is all heart right here, which I love from Webb. This is a great play. The spin move by Webb. Um, just showing um, just all heart. This is all heart here. Um, I love that that he was able to break free and get a first down out of that play. Every running play Davis Webb had, the running game was just atrocious. This might have been their best run. It was maybe like a five-yard run. It's second and five. It's time to be aggressive and go play action. Instead, they do another handoff. It gets maybe it gets like maybe nothing. That was a really good play there. Sets up third and two. Uh, and then they and then they just run it two more times. So then Davis Webb gets absolutely royally screwed on this drive. They run it into the line, and then this backup group of O linemen who are terrible they screw uh, again. They screw it up again. Fourth and one. Build toughness in your football team, and the Falcons just absolutely blow it up. An embarrassing effort on fourth and one, and now Webb and everybody's out of rhythm. Defense gets a stop. Here, Webb, I mean, at least he took a chance down the field, right? At least he took a chance. Um, but uh, what's his name here? Um, the, the, the tackle from USC, he just couldn't get low enough all day long. I mean, that, that's a lot of pressure in Webb's face. Again, Webb does not step up into the pocket whatsoever. I like the pre-snap look, though, because the pre-snap look is that this safety is all the way over here. So the Jets are going to run like a nice route going towards the sideline. They're kind of going to run a switch route where I believe the guy's going to do a wheel from the slot, and that's kind of what happens. And, and Webb is fading back, playing scared, but he just has the arm talent to still get this ball out there and um, gets a little P.I. there, which, I, which, which, which is always a good thing. This is a good throw, too. Now, Webb, what I need to see him do in the next preseason game, he needs to start attacking the middle of the field. He's, like, somehow allergic to the middle of the field. 
Webb with a deep drop, very deep drop here. But this is a good throw by Davis Webb, okay? This is an athletic throw by Webb, and this throw is awesome. It's thrown with great velocity. It's his best throw of the night. The thing is here, I love the placement of this ball because it signals to um, number 10. It used to be Jermaine Curse. Number 10 is... I literally do not know. It's literally not even mentioned uh, who who in the heck that guy is. Might be an obvious name, but I don't know it. I don't know everything. He's got to bring this ball in. It's actually number 18. It's Deontay Burnett. So it's not a 10. And he just doesn't secure that ball. And Davis gives him a chance. And that would have been second and five. And what did the Jets do so predictably? They just run right into the gullet, like doing nothing. And then Webb's like, should I get a field goal? Then it's this third and nine again. Webb drops back to pass. And here he's just scared. Like, like step up in the middle of the field. Like, charge this area right here. Step up here. Look down the field. Take over the middle of the pocket. If you have to scramble and get a few yards, you get a few yards. But this play fading away is what costs Webb. Look at that. Look at Webb right here. If he were to just step up in the middle of the pocket, take ownership of the middle of the pocket, if he were just to step up there, the game would be so different. It would be so drastically different. He needs to focus on that forward step of hopping into the center of the pocket instead of always being afraid. And, and I, I maybe he is very afraid because of his backup offensive line. He needs to step up here in the middle of the pocket and start taking over the middle of the pocket. And that's what I want to see from Webb in the next game is I don't want to see him fading away. I want to see Webb step up in the middle of the pocket. But think, Davis Webb's only played two quarters in the last year. The guy never plays meaningful snaps of football. That's why for Webb, I hope that he continues to play in the preseason. Even if Vince McMahon has the league, Davis can go there and showcase some talent and actually play against live um, opponents because he needs to step up in the middle of the field and he needs he needs reps he needs game reps badly and I, I'm glad that we're getting these game reps so he got a field goal out of that drive which is fine and then we continue um, one more drive one more series in this third quarter it was a very short stay and Luke Falk honestly did a better job I mean Luke Falk Davis Webb has a lot higher upside Luke Falk doesn't really have upside like Davis Davis six foot five can really throw the football down the field Luke Falk doesn't have an arm at all but Luke Falk was able to just hit a lot of underneath stuff he was very decisive he played really well and uh and and that's kind of um that he did play well like like he got good field position and he took advantage right of the good field position so here's a play action and right here's the perfect example of what Webb of what he needs to do and some guys are never able to do this so this playing quarterback in the NFL is not is is very hard and pocket presence is something that uh I hate the word comes naturally, but Davis Webb just he needs to get we need to get better in the in the pocket presence quality of Webb because here he just needs to sidestep. And if he sidestepped here and reset to the left side, he might be able to bomb this ball. There might be a guy wide open and then Webb can can utilize his talents. Instead, he's not even getting off the ground. I, I view Webb as an aircraft. He, he has the potential to be a really good aircraft, but he never is. Um, but the aircraft is never technically sound enough for the pilots to even release it from the gate. So Webb is an aircraft that's ready to cross the Atlantic, but Webb and, and but the cockpit does not allow the aircraft to even go down the runway. They don't even leave the terminal. And because there's problems with the offensive line, he's always a third stringer. He's never playing. And if Webb actually went here on this play, if Webb could go instead of backing up, I don't, I don't even know. Maybe this is a damn screen pass. 
Maybe it's a damn screen pass. <sighs> really frustrating. And then they run it, of course, which is ugh, just so stupid. You know, it's just, it's awful. You know, there's barely any, uh, again, coaches don't care about that. They, they don't plan. There's no game planning into the preseason. And then look at Webb here. You have 69 who's completely beaten off the edge. And and uh and, and this guy this guy uh, what's his name um this guy uh, the, uh this this uh, Chuma guy Chuma Udoga look at Udoga just get completely dragged Udoga just gets completely tossed to the side Tom Compton look at Tom Compton right here and look at that a swing and a miss. Swing and a miss from Jordan Morgan. And that's who you're dealing with playing in the third string of a preseason game. This is what you're dealing with here. Well, let me let me give you Davis Webb's night in a nutshell. And at least there were no turnovers. It could have even been worse. Hello, Falcon friends. Yeah, is that a is that a healthy is that a healthy pocket? Is that healthy for everybody to throw? Is that a a ideal situation for a quarterback? Because Luke Falk, he wasn't dealing with that. He wasn't dealing with a swarm of red falcons around the pocket like that. Third and seven, nice down and distance there. The Jets probably ran the ball for Webb like nine times. They probably got 11 yards. They averaged probably one and a half yards a carry. Uh, just just guessing. So that's kind of what we're dealing with here. But here's the positives. We got a field goal out of the drive. We found some completions. We had a very nice run. We're going to work on pocket effectiveness for next week. We're going to work on stepping up in the pocket, actually attacking the pocket, and just being confident in the pocket and letting plays develop and improvising a tad because we're going to need to improvise, especially in long, down, and distances. So... I like what we're doing. It's all about the pocket. It's all about seeing things, but it's really about footwork. It's about owning the pocket, the center of the pocket, and really not playing scared and stepping up and owning it and not fading away from throws. And, and if we do that, we'll actually, we might actually have a chance to hit some huge plays next week. So I'm very excited. I thought the ball placement tonight was very good. Speaking of the good things, ball placement really good. Gave receivers time to run and catch the ball. Protected the football. Got points when necessary. And dealt with the hand that we were dealt with and got through it. So, um, overall, thank you guys for watching the film review. Appreciate y'all. And, um, and we'll try to get some more videos up here. All right.